Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And this is where you're going to find awesome trade talk. I got a trade video coming up uh, about somebody pretty interesting ever since the JT Miller trade went down. Uh, so be watching out for it. Somebody might not have been thinking that I think he may be getting traded. But right now we're doing a series on going into the season, each NHL team's breakthrough player and breakdown player. Which player is most likely to break through and have a great year after maybe not having all that many? Either that sometimes some of the players will had they been doing well, but this is when they just go off. Uh, and some of it might be some young players that I think it's time this is the year they hit their stride. Those are what breakthrough players may are. Breakdown players are just like they are. Like this is going to be the year that either the decline happens or it's already been a decline and this is where they really hit the wall. So we're going to be looking at those players we just did up until Minnesota. So check out that video because that one is pretty cool. We're still talking about it and all the land there. Uh, and now we're going to be looking at Montreal to Winnipeg. Montreal to Winnipeg. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all sports, all four major sports, and all the teams within it, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. All right, sub yourself up because I do live stuff too. Hockey season is just around the corner. And I do stuff with Peyton on the radio and on my channel where I do hockey analysis for play-by-play -play people. Also, off-the-wall hockey. We do it with him as well, if you know him. I do I do a lot of stuff with him as well. So, sub yourself up and you can be part of it. All right, let's get to her. Montreal. We start with Montreal, and I was on the fence here um, for breakout player. I, I think Cole Caulfield, of course, could have his best season this year. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he seemed to do well under St. Louis in the second half last year. Uh, Suzuki as well. Like both of them together could have a breakout season. They're going to get all the ice time in the world. Uh, another year older, another year better. Could very well be. And I almost picked one of them. But I think, and uh, this is probably bias. I just love these types of players. I'm going to go with Kirby Doc. I, I just think after uh, he, his first year in Montreal or in Chicago, he put up some, I mean, good numbers for an 18 year old. They're not spectacular numbers, but 23 points in 64 games. But not only that, he looked like a leader. He looked like he was ruling the ice out there already at how old is he now? 21? Yeah, that was three years ago. That was an 18-year-old. He was already crushing 23 points in 64 games. That's fantastic for an 18-year-old. And since then, there's just been all the turmoil in Chicago, uh, the rebuild sort of and change, and it's been just a mess there. So with that being said, I think when he gets in a healthy environment like there will be in Montreal, I know you're going to say, what do you mean healthy environment? Look at how they played last year. But St. Louis did bring a healthy environment there. And they were playing with a lot of pride. And I just have a feeling he's going to grasp onto that energy. And he's going to move up on guys like Sean Monaghan. Sean Monaghan has barely played. I... I don't think it's going to be all that difficult for a Kirby Doc if he's playing at his physical ability to take out Sean Monaghan for the third line center role or even press Christian Dvorak for playing time, to tell you the honest truth as well. So that's my guy. I just think he's going to have a great year. You could say the same for Suzuki and Caulfield, but I'm going with Kirby Doc. For break down player, I'm going with Mike Hoffman. I just never have liked his game at all. He's a power play specialist. He can potch at 30 goals, but he's an absolute disaster in just about every part, of, every other part of the game. He's basically a power play specialist at this time. And I could definitely... Josh Anderson improved his defensive play last year in the second half greatly, which makes him a much more effective player than I used to give him credit for. 
And I think he's going to take minutes from Hoffman. I think Brendan, Cal Brendan Gallagher will come back healthy. There's a lot of people putting down Brendan Gallagher right now or writing him off, and I'm just not going to write him off. He's too much of a heart and soul guy. Um, so I could see Hoffman losing a lot of minutes and mostly playing the power play. So I'm going to take Hoffman as my breakdown player. Montreal Canadian fans, tell me what you think. And don't be shy. You can disagree. And you can disagree even impolitely for all I care. <laughs> I'll still talk to you. It's hockey. What's, there's nothing polite about hockey. And that's what I like about it. All right. Sub yourself up to my channel and talk, comment in the comment section. Um, or if you, you don't even have to sub. But comment. I really love talking to you guys. Nashville Predators is next. And the breakthrough player for the Nashville Predators, I think it would be extremely important for Nashville for Eli Tolvanen to be the breakthrough player. I just have not liked his game. The guy, he could be just a late blooming dude, and he's one of these days he's going to put it all together because he's got all the tools. But he just doesn't seem to have that, you know, I mean, they call it oomph or gumption or whatever. I just don't see it from Eli. And his his hockey sense is just not growing at the pace that you would want from a from a prospect that's 23 years old. My guy is Tanner Janot. And I just freaking love Tanner Janot. And you could say he had a breakthrough season last year. What do you mean? How could this be the breakthrough season? Well, I just think he can do more. I think he can even go greater. I think he could be a 60, 60 to 70 point player, to tell you the honest truth, next year. And take Tolvin in spot. In which case, you know, play with Ryan Johansson, Niederreiter in that top line. And Tolvanen may be used as trade fodder if that's the case, but I could see it. That's my breakout player. Um, there's not too many other guys I would say are breakout here. It's not a very young team. Um, so, but that being said, I think Tanner Juno could have a really good breakout year. All right. So the break down player is, and this was another thing that really bodes well for. Nashville, is there really isn't a breakdown player here? Oh, by the way, I forgot about Philip Tomasino. Jeez. That's another guy. I love Philip Tomasino. I could definitely see him taking out, uh, you know, maybe taking Nita Ryder's minutes and stuff like that. Forgot about that. Love him as well. But Ryan McDonough, and it's not because I think that he's really going to break down. He's just, he is 34 years old and he's, going to be competing for ice time with Ekholm and Josie. So it's he's going to be more of a 5-6 guy going forward with Nashville, unless there's injuries and stuff like that. So he's, he's probably not going to be pulling 22 minutes a night. And that might be best for him right now. But when he's on the ice, he's still going to be a beast. I still love him. Don't get too caught up with what I'm saying here. It's just, a, it's probably going to be a little less minutes, maybe not as quite as many points. But the good thing is for Nashville is I don't see too many breakdown players here. And this is a team that is going to have to rely on four lines to be successful. I personally think they could really surprise some people this year. I love their lineup, to tell you the honest truth. Tell me what you think, Nashville Predators fans. If I've missed anything or you disagree, comment in the comment section. Sub up to my YouTube channel and let me know. Next, New Jersey Devils. And this is another tough one to get. There's so many breakout players. And hardly any that I think are breakdown players. In fact, virtually none. There's only one. But for breakthrough players, I mean, you could go Brat to even crush it more this year. You could say, on. I think Andre Palat. Which you say he's 31 breakthrough. Well, regular season wise, he hasn't really been the most offensive guy in the world. Um, he's really known for his uh, playoffs, and I mean, that's great, but he hasn't really put huge numbers up in the regular season. I think this is the year he will, but he's also not my breakthrough player. 
you could say he sure gets his offense going this year finally. Like, not finally, finally, but more the way he was supposed to be an overpointed game player. Um, Dawson Mercer, I wouldn't call it breakthrough because he's still a young guy. He's, you know, it's still kind of rookie-ish. But my guy is Jack Hughes. And uh, for a full season this year, I think he's going to get over 100 points. His first year at over 100 points in this in his career, uh, and this is just the beginning. I, I don't know what the I don't know where this guy is going to go points wise somewhere down the road. Uh, he could get 120 somewhere down the road. I I'm not going to underestimate Jack Hughes, but I do think with Andre Palat there and Jesper Brad on his right, and him getting leadership from Andre Palat that. He's going to have a wicked year, and it'll be his breakthrough to superstardom. People will start realizing that Jack Hughes is a superstar. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Honorable mention here, Vitek Vanacek. Vitek Vanacek could have a fantastic year this year. He, Washington isn't known for developing goaltenders well, and I think this was really an astute pickup for them. There was a lot of times last year where Vanacek looked like he could beat the world. And if he can do that consistently, he's another guy that I would put as a very top, as a top pick, as a breakthrough player. Comment in the comment section. Let me know, New Jersey fans. All right, next, New York Islanders. And yeah, breakthrough player. Finally, I believe, finally, Oliver Wallstrom is going to get a chance to play up in the top lines and stop this bottom nine stuff. A guy with a shot like his has got to be up there in the top six. It's enough. Enough already. And I think his best spot would be with Nelson and Lee uh, because he's a straight line player. And I just, that line would be very tough to handle in the offensive zone. Lee crash in the net. Nelson finding either Lee or Wallstrom to pass it to on the breakout so Wallstrom can come in. There'd be shots for days, shots all over the place. And uh, I think Wallstrom would just kick ass finally up there in the top nine and have his breakthrough year that we've been all waiting for. Um, breakdown year. I personally don't think Palmieri is ever going to be back to what he was before. I could be wrong. He could prove me wrong this year. But honestly, last year, yeah, okay, there was a short summer and all of that stuff like that. But the guy has been declining for a while now. It's not like he just had one poor year. When they, when they signed him to a contract, he only had, what, 45, 17 points in 34 games, and they signed him to that outrageous contract that he has. He has 33 points in 69 games, and now all of a sudden he's going to revert back to being, what, a 25-goal scorer? I suppose he could, but I, I just don't think so because I think Wallstrom's going to be taking his spot in the lineup. I think he's going to finally crush it. he got a good young coach there, different philosophy, I believe, and he's going to give uh, some of the younger players a better chance, I would hope, because they deserve it, and it's time. Okay, New York Islanders fans, tell me what you think. Is there another breakthrough player or break breakdown player? There's several breakdown players uh, that could happen here as well, and I don't like to say that, but, you know, Zach Parise, can he break down any more than he already has? <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're old. They're freaking old, and they need rebounds from guys like Pajot and all that. Uh, Anthony Bilvillier could be there too. He could get, be the guy that gets a chance with Parise to play with Barzal and have a breakthrough. So I'll give him a secondary, but I think Oliver Wallstrom is going to be the guy. All right, sub yourself up, Islanders fans. Tell me what you think about what I said, or and give me your own play. Give me your own. Tell me I'm crazy. I don't care. Whatever. Comment in the comment section. Sub up to my channel. New York Rangers. Um, and they've got a few breakthrough players, but like anybody I think out there, 
would have to say, I'm not going against the grain here, when I go with Alexis Lafreniere. Um, he just looked beastly in the playoffs. I don't think that's going to change. The one thing I will say is I'm not sure that the right side is where he's going to be able to stay. And I'm not saying he can't. I'm not saying he can't do it. It's just really tough to play that right side. And so far, he hasn't looked overly comfortable there. Um, so if he stays there, it may not be. And if he doesn't, if it doesn't translate for him to be on the right side, I would hope that they would put Kreider, Kreider there, or Kreider there, I should say. And, uh, you know, he's, he, that's going to hurt his numbers, but he's already got a paycheck. And put Lafreniere on the left-hand side where he, I think, is best right now. Kako, of course, could be a breakthrough player. Um, Phil, I, I almost went with Philip Heedle here because I love him. I absolutely love Philip Heedle. I think I've been talking about him for a long time as a guy that I think is going to eventually take the reins and be a second line center. But I got to go with Lafreniere. As far as the breakdown player is concerned, I hate to say it, but I think it's going to be Vincent Trocek. I think he. I. I, I think this was a mistake contract. I. Per, I personally, if you look at his numbers, last year he had fifty-one points in eighty-one games for Carolina. The year before he had almost a point a game. The year before that, again half a point at Florida, half a point a game. Um, he had a good year in 2021 to 2021. Will be a, he be able to be that or be the 51 player he was in Carolina? By the way, that being that 51 player and point player in Carolina, he did that with some really good players. So if you think that Panarin is going to change everything for him, he was with Svechnikov and Tarabinen. That is a really good line, and he only put up 51 points. I could be wrong here. Maybe he's going to be a lot. Maybe he's going to come back to the what he was in 2020-21. But that was only one year of the last five. I think it could be a breakdown year, especially with Hedl, uh breathing down his neck to take those second line minutes. That's my pick. What do you guys think, Rangers fans? I have a feeling I'm going to get a little trouble for this one because they just signed him. A lot of people really want him to do well, and I don't blame you. I'd want him to do well if I was a Rangers fan, but I have a feeling he's not. Uh, as far as also you have K. Andre Miller can be a breakout player. Braden Schneider I almost went with. I mean, I think he's going to be taking Truba minutes fairly quickly. A lot of breakout players here, which bodes well for the New York Rangers. But that's my that's my breakdown player. Rangers fans, comment in the comment section. Sub up to my channel. Let me know what you think. All right. Ottawa Senators. Breakout player. Plain and simple. There's a lot of good ones here. I know there, I know there's a lot of good ones here, but I got to go with Timmy Stutzel like everybody else. I mean, we saw him the last couple of years, how he's played, right? He is or last two years, 20 years old, 58 points last year. I don't think he stopped him for nothing. And you put Jabrinkat and Batherson on his line, forget about it. That line is going to be awesome. I would be unbelievably surprised if Stusla doesn't have a crushing year, a point a game or more. Seriously, I, I just love him. And breakdown player. There's a lot of, oh, but by the way, there's a lot of breakthrough players. Kachuk can still go off. He's only 22 years old. Pinto, I mean, just on and on and on with this team. Amazing talent. Batherson could still keep on. He's still going to be on an upward trajectory. I love the team. It's fantastic. But breakdown, this was tough. And that was the other thing. You know you're a good team, but it's hard to find breakdown players as well. But I do think it's going to be Travis Hamannick. I just have a feeling that Sanderson, Lassie Thompson, these guys are going to quickly be taking minutes from Travis Hamannick. Um, he's, he's, he's a decent defenseman. He's not great. He certainly shouldn't be 
he really at this point in his career, he shouldn't be a top four. He shouldn't be in anybody's top four if they have a good defense. And I think he's going to quickly lose his spot to some very good players in Thompson and Sanderson, although Sanderson plays at a different uh, position. But actually, no, he's right. Yeah, he's a right defenseman. So, yeah, he's going to lose his, his minutes. That's my breakdown player for Ottawa. Let me know in the comment section what you think there, Ottawa fans. Okay, next. Philadelphia Flyers. And the hard part was finding a breakthrough player. Sort of. Actually, I think Konechny can do really well with uh, Tortorella there. I, I think Tortorella has, a, has an ability to push the buttons of players. And uh, I think that's what he needs. And I think he could have a really good year under Tortorella. But my breakthrough player, after injury last year, a lot of injury and stuff, I just love the guy's game. I hope he's he's uh, built up some muscle physically, and I, I'm not aware if that's the case or not. But assuming he has, Joel Farabee, I think, could have a fantastic year. He's probably going to get top-line minutes and uh, really get a chance to succeed there in Philadelphia. And I think he will. He's, he's Tortorella's type of guy. So that would be my breakthrough player. And the breakdown player, Frost. I know you're saying, well, he had a great second half and all this. He, I, I don't see it. He's, he's, got, he's a decent point producer, but he's not what I would give. I don't see him in the top six. I don't see him in the bottom six. Uh, he's physically very weak. He can't seem to gain weight. It's going to be very tough for him to be a regular in the NHL. And I think we're going to see, especially with Hayes coming back, less and less of Morgan Frost. So that's my breakdown player. Sorry, Maury. I hope I'm wrong. I'm sure he's a nice guy and all those sort of things like that. But uh, I could have took Van Riemsdyk, but I mean, as he he's just, breaks, he's just been breaking down for so long, it's not even a breakdown player anymore. Okay, next. Pittsburgh Penguins. And it's kind of tough to find a breakthrough player here because it's it's a fairly old team and most of their play, most of their players have already kind of broke through. But I'm gonna go with Drew O'Connor. I just his I love his physical play. I I love his compete. He he has to compact his game a little more so he's not running around all over the place, I think. But uh with that being said. I think he's going to get a really good opportunity here. Jason Zucker uh, has been having a rough go the last couple of years, and I think Drew O'Connor is primed to add some physicality to a line like that. So if Jason Zucker doesn't come out flying, I could see Drew O'Connor taking his spot, putting up a little more offense this year, and really bringing uh, a, a kind of game that I think Pittsburgh craves. As far as Jason Zucker is concerned, he is my breakdown player. He's just been having so many problems with injuries. I don't know if it's going to be a, it's going to really stop. It seems like his career has kind of peaked and those injuries have taken its toll. Um, and I can't see it changing. So breakthrough, Drew O'Connor. Breakdown, Jason Zucker. Tell me what you think, Pittsburgh Penguins fans. Is that what you would choose as your breakthrough and break? Breakdown players, comment in the comment section. Sub up to the YouTube channel and let me know. All right, next. San Jose Sharks. Um, this is a tough one too because they are in. The, they have got a lot of middle end players that kind of already broke through already. Um. But, and not too many young players ready to break through. However, there's one. And I think that's Capo Kakinen, their goaltender. This is, he's going to have no pressure on him whatsoever here. And uh, because of that, I have a feeling 
that he's going to be able to keep in his own mind, keep in his own head. It, most of it has been mental for Kakinen right now. In Minnesota, Talbot was a guy, then Fleury came in, and he, he really, it was hard for him to get a rhythm. Now he's got all the tools. He's, he's, he's very quick. He's got the reflexes, he, you know, a little bit of work on positioning, but now he's really going to get a chance to work on that positioning. And uh, I just have a feeling he's going to have a very good year. He's going to have a breakthrough year this year. Breakdown, I mean, there's a lot of players that could, I suppose, here. Nick Benino, you know, 34 years old, but I still love the guy. Um, Oscar Lindblom, I would like to give him. I, I, you know, it's possible, but I'm hoping he actually has a great year after getting through cancer and leaving Philadelphia. But I think it's Edward Vlasic. I just don't see him going anywhere but down every single year. Uh, he'll lose his minutes to Radom Simic or anybody else that's NHL caliber because I think he's barely NHL caliber now, to tell you the honest truth. So that is my breakthrough and breakdown players for the San Jose Sharks. Comment in the comments section. Let me know if you agree with me. And if you don't or what have you, sub up to my YouTube channel. And let me know. Seattle. Okay, breakthrough players. I mean, we could go with Beniers, right? But he's only 19 years old. If he has a really good year this year, it's not really a breakthrough as much as just a really good rookie year. Breakthrough is usually when you go crazy in one year. And honestly, I think Beniers could do well. But nine points in 10 games, it's great. He's got the skill. What are you going to do in an 82-game schedule? That's what matters. And I'm not sure. It's really hard at 19 years old, as we've seen with Lafreniere uh, and, uh, and many other players, Byfield, say, to be able to be consistent physically all through an 82-game schedule. If he does, great. But for me, I think Vince Dunn is going to go off this year. He's right at that age that NHL defensemen start to develop finish their development, and I think he's going to – this is a year with Adam Larson on his right-hand side, uh, getting lots of power play time with a lot more offense in their lineup with Bjork Strand that they brought in and Andre Burakovsky. I think Vince Dunn's going to put up his, a career points production season and uh, also even better defensively as well. I think this is a year he breaks out. So – that's my breakout player for Seattle. Tell me what you what you think they're Seattle fans. Breakdown player. Honestly, I think uh, Burakovsky will start taking the minutes and possibly even Bjorkstrand if they decide to play him on the right-hand side from Jordan Everly. Um, he played well. He played well last year. Not bad. But it's start, he's starting to get down to the downside. And I think that that's going to continue. So I'm taking Jordan Eberle to break down and uh, Burakovsky, uh, guys and Bjorkstrand to also have very good years this year and take his spot. Next, sub yourself up, Seattle fans. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Uh, Blues, St. Louis Blues. Hopefully. All right, I'm still going to go. I had a bit of an interruption there. But St. Louis Blues. The breakthrough player for the St. Louis Blues, I think, is Ivan Barbashev. Ivan Barbashev um, had a great year last year. They could say that, that well, you could say that that's his break. He had his breakout year last year. But the thing is that I think he's got way more, and I've been saying this for a long time now, and I think he takes Brandon Saad's spot off that top line. And Brad's, Brandon Saad is my breakdown player this year from this lineup. 
Um, he may not break down because I think it's quite possible that Saad maybe uh, look towards using as a trade to add more to this defense that honestly I think is very underwhelming. And then he would not break down because he'd have more opportunity wherever he goes more than likely. But I think Ivan Barbershop is going to steal that spot for him off of him this year. I really do. He could go down and play with Shannon Costin, and that's not bad for a third line. But uh, he's not. he probably wouldn't get the points that he would playing top-line minutes. So pretty simple. Um, I also could see Nick Letty having a breakdown year, although I never was all that high on Nick Letty. So that's the reason why I didn't give him that. Uh, Jordan Biddington, I think, who knows what he's going to have. Tell me in the comment section. What do you think? Jordan Biddington in the playoffs, he seems all over the place. What's What do you think Jordan Biddington's issue is? I personally think he gets just – He's a little cocky and uh, has a, a emotional and stuff like that. When he keeps his emotions check and is a little more humble, he's at his best. But, all right, let me know, St. Louis Blues fans, who you think the breakthrough and breakdown player is. Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, getting to the point where breakthrough players are a little hard to find on Tampa Bay Lightning. They're, they're needing to get some youth in this lineup. Now, one thing we know about Tampa Bay is they always seem to find it. When you think they're out of it, they have more youth somewhere scraping in the, in the, they go into the cracks of their couch or whatever and find more. But this year, my breakthrough player for the Tampa Bay Lightning is Col Ross, is Colton. Ross Colton. I always screw around. I always screw up. For some reason, I want to call him Colton Ross. But it's Ross Colton, because I like the name Colton, I think. I think he's going to have a great year. Uh, he, he's, his analytics are absolutely insane. I love his game. Uh, he's he's uh, worked hard down there in the third line to become as good as he possibly can. There's a spot open for him. Him and Hagel are going to fight it out for Palat's spot. I think Ross takes it and plays with Stamkos and Kucherov. And crushes this year. As far as my breakdown player, well, because of that, Hagel then would move to the second line and Kalorn will play with Paul and, and Perry. Uh, Kalorn's offense kind of seems to be fading a little bit. It, it, it didn't have as much offense in the playoffs. And I just think that it, that's going to continue. He's 32 years old. He's starting to go on the downside. And it's okay. Kalorn's very good defensively. He's great for the third line. It's time to move the younger players in. This is a natural proje uh, projection. and uh, But I just think Kalorn will take a hit offensively going down into the, to getting less minutes, maybe getting less power play time and stuff like that. So Tampa Bay fans, what do you think about that? Next, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, and the breakthrough player for me for the Toronto Maple Leafs is Timothy Lilligren. I love Sandine. Okay. I have a feeling he's going to end up being trade fodder, fodder, Sandine is, as long as they get a good amount for him in return. Like people have to appreciate how talented he is. Do I think Lilligren is better than Sandine? Is up on his upside? Probably not, but he plays at a position that is going to be more advantageous for Toronto, as Sandine is a left defenseman. And I just don't see them trading Jake Muzzin. I don't know. If they can move Jake Muzzin and keep Sandine, maybe they change. I change my mind on that. Maybe that is the plan somewhere down the road. But I think Lilligren's going to take Justin Hole's spot either. And ta as uh, uh, for sure, and he's going to get more power play time. I love the way he's progressing. I think he's I think he's very underrated. So Timothy Lilligren is my breakout player for Toronto. My breakdown player is a guy that I just mentioned that Lilligren will replace, and that is Justin Hole. Everybody that I know in Toronto wants to see Justin Hole gone, and uh, could very well happen. But he's certainly going to get replaced, I believe. Okay, next pick. 
next Toronto fans sub up and let me know what you think in the comment section sub up to my YouTube channel and let me know Vancouver Canucks and uh, my breakout player for the Vancouver Canucks is Vasily oh sorry it's Ilya Mikhaev Honorable mention to Vasily Podkolzin. I think Vasily Podkolzin is going to have a great year. But Mikhaev had 32 points in 53 games last year, playing on the third line with virtually no power play time in Toronto. Here in Vancouver, I believe he's going to take Tanner Pearson's minutes. He's going to, and Tanner Pearson's going to be my breakdown player for the Vancouver Canucks. I just don't see Tanner Pearson being able to hold up uh, to Pearson, Peterson, and Mikhaev there. Uh, he's going to end up getting third line minutes. Tell you the honest truth, he might be on his way out. But if he's not on his way out, I think his minutes are going to decrease, his power play time is going to decrease, and his points are going to decrease. So those are my two. I think Mikhaev is going to have an absolutely fantastic year this year in Vancouver. I, I love their top nine, actually. If they could get a better defense rolling in Vancouver, this team could be really good really quick. But uh, as it stands, I'm taking Mikhaev. Uh, what do you, who do you think your breakdown player is going to be? And who's your breakout player? Could it be Brock Besser, maybe after having a difficult time with his family last year? Uh, could it be Andre Kuzmenko is just coming in? Tell me in the comment section what you think, boys and girls. All right, next we go to the Washington Capitals. Which is supposed to be here. Okay, we'll do the bet. Oh, yeah, here it is. Washington Capitals. Um, the breakthrough player for the Washington Capitals is McMichael. I, I, this kid is on, this kid is fantastic. His analytics charts are just freaking boom. All he needs is minutes. And I think this is a year he gets them because I think he takes out Connor Brown from the second line left wing spot that they haven't pegged him here at Cap Friendly. And he plays with Stroman Mantha. And I think he does extremely well doing that. Brown moves down. Brown moves down to with uh, Oshi. Or sorry. Brown moves down with uh, Eller and Johansson. And uh, my breakdown player is TJ Oshi. I just mentioned it. He's 36 years old now, man. I mean, I love him when he's healthy. But he really has been looking like he's been breaking down. And I, I, I think that may continue here in Washington. Uh, also, I could have went with uh, Nick Jensen. I, I, I just, I can't see Nick Jensen. He, he, it's, he has been decreasing. The problem, the only reason why I didn't take Nick Jensen is I don't really see anybody who's ready to take his spot yet. So he's probably going to get about as many minutes as he did before. Next, Washington Capitals fans, tell me what you think about that. And next, Vegas Golden Knights. The breakout player for the Vegas Golden Knights, plain and simple, and I do think, and I think this should be a sigh of relief for Vegas fans, if you do believe what I'm saying. It's Jack Eichel. Uh, I heard a lot of poo-poo about Jack Eichel last year. With his 25 points in 34 games, everybody thought he was going to be way better than that. The dude didn't play for a year and had surgery on his back. Come on, man. It's amazing he had 25 points in 34 games. Not bad. Uh, he's going to be great. And I think he's going to break out like crazy and prove everybody wrong this year. And yeah, it's going to be probably insane. If I'm wrong, I'll tell you, there has been talk about Jack Eichel and attitude issues in Buffalo. I don't know if that's uh, a, 
an organization kind of crapping all over a guy that decided to leave or what? I don't know, but we'll we'll find out. We'll find out. My breakdown player for Vegas is Thompson. He's going to have all this pressure on him here right now, Logan Thompson. And honestly, so far, I haven't seen how he's done very well with it. I This is going to be his chance to be a number one, and I just don't see it. Maybe in a couple more years, but I have a feeling they're going to be getting somebody other than even Hill or somebody down the road. Uh, you, I don't think you can pin your hopes on this guy right now. And I have a feeling he's not going to succeed in an extended long-term role. So I'm taking Logan Thompson, which is really, really bad considering they have no goaltenders that are good enough to be able to play that position that we, like Vegas really needs Logan Thompson to go crazy this year. But I don't see it happening. Finally, the Winnipeg Jets and... My breakout, I couldn't find a breakout player. You could say Cole Perfetti, but that's not really a breakout because he's a rookie. If he has a great year, he didn't really break out. He just hit his rookie status hard. That's all. Breakout players are usually guys that are building over a couple and then boom. So I will put him in there since there's not really anybody else to call a breakout player here except for Dylan Sandberg. And I think Dylan Sandberg is going to play a full full year this year. He's going to do very well. I like his game. Um, it's going to be tough for him playing in that second pairing role if they don't find anybody else, but I think he'll succeed. I really like him a lot. They brought him along well. It's time. He's my breakout player. My breakdown player is Riddich or Wheeler. You want to call Wheeler, like he had 60 points in 65 games last year. He can still put up the points, but defensively he's a basket case now at this stage of his career. And I just don't see it going anywhere but down from him for him. And Riddich, Riddich has just never proven anybody. He's had a couple good stints, but I think this could be catastrophic for Winnipeg, especially if Connor Hellebuck goes down. Forget about it. Season over. If Hellebuck goes down, I don't see Riddich being anywhere near good enough to get this team into the playoffs. And honestly, I think this could be his last year in the league. Unless he somehow miraculously turns it around, but this guy, I don't know his numbers already. You could say he already had his breakdown year, but I think it's even going to break down even more. He's got an, He's got a a terrible attitude for a goaltender, um, and you'll find out about it. That's my full 42, everybody. I went through all of it. Let me know in the comment section if you agree or disagree. Have a great day. Okay. Bye.